Good morning. I say good morning. Grace and peace be unto you and to those of you that is chiming in on this live broadcast. We bring you greetings. Those of you who are tapping in to the conference call, we bring you greetings. My name is Minister Sherwood and we are here at the Cathedral Grace Family Church where my bishop is Robert Fulton Hargrove II and my first lady, Sheila C. Hargrove where the vision is building God's kingdom one family at a time through evangelism, education, and empowerment. I don't know about you, but I'm excited to be here in the house of the Lord. Are you excited to be here in the house of the Lord? I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord and praise his holy name. I don't know about you, but I didn't put a tie on on purpose this morning. I don't know about you, but I didn't put on no colorful suits this morning. I put on something plain because I didn't come to look cute. I came to lift up the name of the Lord. What about you? Why don't you stand up on your feet and charge the atmosphere? I'm going to take about 30 seconds and I'm going to clap my hands and I'm going to do my dance with you right now. Come on, Lonnie. The Bible says that when the praises go up, the blessings come down. I'm looking for a blessing this morning. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, are you happy to be here in the house of the Lord? Somebody look at the other neighbor and say, I'm glad about it. I'm so glad about it to be here in the house of the Lord. Those of you who are tapping into this live broadcast, we want to thank you so very much for choosing the Cathedral Grace Family Church where my bishop is Robert Fulton Hargrove II and my first lady, Sheila C. Hargrove, where the vision is still building God's kingdom one family at a time through evangelism, education, and empowerment. Three minutes, three minutes before the man of God comes up. Three minutes before the man of God comes up. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be here in the house of the Lord. Why don't you lift up your hand and wave your hands those of you who are still tapping in to this live broadcast, please comment so I can acknowledge you. I see some people at this time tapping into this live broadcast. All the way from the Bronx, New York, Rebecca Lewis, we want to thank you so very much for tapping into this live broadcast. Sandra Samuel, we want to thank you so very much for tapping in to this live broadcast. One of the elders, John W. Newsom. We want to thank you so very much for continuously tapping in to this live broadcast. Two minutes, two minutes before the man of God comes up. Two minutes before the man of God comes up. Oh, I'm excited. I'm excited to be here in the house of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I look forward to coming into the house of the Lord. I want to hear a word from the Lord. Do you want to hear a word from the Lord? I believe and have expectation that there's a word from the Lord this morning. Once again, my name is Minister Sherwood and we are in the city of the great city of Atlantic City in the Chelsea Heights community, 3901 Filbert Avenue at the Cathedral Grace Family Church. One minute, one minute before the man of God comes up, one minute before the man of God comes up, the Bible says that faith without works is dead. Now I'm excited to introduce my man of God. Bishop, he is the preacher of the first magnitude. Bishop is not a novice. He has been pastoring for over 31 years. Bishop is an educated man. He received his terminal degree from North Carolina Theological Seminary. Our bishop is very active civically and socially in our community. He serves on many boards. He currently serves as the president of the Fellowship of Churches of Atlantic City and vicinity. He also serves on the board of the Boy Scouts of America. He also serves on the board of Interfaith Action Movement. The Bible says that faith without works is dead. This man not only has the faith, he has the work. Introducing my bishop, Reverend Dr. Robert Fulton Hargrove II.
Well, good morning. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, Facebook family. Good morning, YouTube. Good morning to those of you who are on the phone. And good morning to you, you, and you. This is the day the Lord has made. I decree and I declare we shall rejoice and be glad about it. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm glad about it. Look at your other neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm glad about it. We got a couple of minutes before we get started. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. I said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I know you can't hear us in Facebook land. I know you can see us. Amen. I know you can't touch us. I know you're not here. Amen. But in this atmosphere, there is something electric happening. And I want you to join us. Uh, you might not be able to sing with us. You might not be able to, listen to me now, you might not be able to do a whole lot of things with us, but you can say so, amen? So come on, Grace family. Let's give our God, the great God of heaven, the great God of earth, a Psalm 150. Let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. We got one minute. Can you help me praise him? Just for one minute. Well, we got 30 more seconds. I said, we got 30 more seconds. Come on and clap your hands. feel pretty good right now thank you Facebook family for joining us here at the Cathedral Grace Family Church 3901 Filbert Avenue in the great city of Atlantic City where our vision is building God's kingdom one family at a time through evangelism education and empowerment I don't know about you, but I'm excited to hear what thus saith the Lord. Well, well. When the praises go up, the blessings come down. I said, when the praises go up, the blessings come down. Somebody ought to shout, I need, I need a blessing. I said, somebody ought to shout, I need, I need a blessing. I can tell you how to get it, Pop. I can tell you how to get it, Coley. I can tell you how to get it. This is how you get it. You praise our God. Well, I'm praising. Well, we got to get into the word. Man shall not live by bread alone. But every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Woo!
With joy we draw water from the well of salvation. Come on and give the Lord a 47 song. Oh, clap unto the Lord, all ye people. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. One glad morning when this life is over. I don't know about you, but I'll fly away. Somebody said you ought to practice flying. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Isn't God good? Amen. In the midst of every test, trial, and tribulation, God is good. Amen. Come on and clap unto the Lord one more time. Before we get into our lesson today, we want to say thank you. Those of you that are here, thank you on the phone line, YouTube, and to our Facebook family. And we would like to share with you that today we are honored to have in our presence, not just our Grace family, church family, a handful here, but my bishop and my father is here. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 You might hear our announcer sometimes say, my bishop, the right reverend, Robert F. Hargrove II, because I am a bishop and a bishop over pastors. But my bishop is here. So he is the most reverend. Robert F. Hargrove the first because he's a bishop over bishops. Amen. And we're happy to have him today. Your grace, thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Working on towards 50 years in ministry and on his sabbatical, he said, I'm just going to go sit down with my name's sake. Amen. See, a lot of people because of his uh, authority in the kingdom can call him father and they don't know if they're talking about spiritual father or biological father but he is my biological father amen so he didn't just come down to one of his sons in ministry he came to his namesake amen yeah three of us are here today my namesake is here what you say what you say amen Amen. Amen. Let's get started. We got a long way to go and a little bit of time to get there. Amen. Yeah. I'm going to ask you if you would be so kind to join me. The gospel according to St. Luke, the fourth chapter, verse 18. The gospel according to St. Luke, the fourth chapter, verse 18. We do want to say thank you also to... My father's trusted adjutant and friend, Reverend Carter, is here. When you see my father, you see Reverend Carter. <laughs> and Carter will be back in November. We have two Sundays for pastor's anniversary. 
He's going to be one of our preachers. Right. Amen. He'll be back in November. Now, don't preach what I'm preaching today, but you can come back. <laughs> Amen. St. Luke 4 and 18, if you have it, say praise the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Amen. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim at liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. This is the word of the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. Deliverance, deliverance is here. I said, look at your neighbor one more time and shout, neighbor, neighbor. oh, neighbor. neighbor. Deliverance, deliverance is here. Amen. Amen. If you believe it, you ought to clap your hands. I said, deliverance is here. Let's pray. Father, we love you and thank you for this wonderful opportunity and privilege to assemble ourselves together. We thank you that the storm is out over the ocean, but it's not moving this way. One more time, you spared us from a direct hit, and we're so grateful. We're grateful today for this opportunity grateful today for this presence that we sense in the atmosphere grateful today for the presence of one of your great trombones reverend dr robert f hargrove senior thank you lord for his presence today his strength his stability and his success here now we sit our minds are alert and our hearts are receptive to receive the seed of the word of God. Challenge us, change us, and convict us. In Jesus' name we pray. And God's people said, Amen. Come on and give the Lord a clap offering. <laughs> Deliverance is here. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated in 1968, prior to his death in the 50s and 60s, it was a unique time in our community because without a college degree, you could get a job, a good job, live next door or across the street from a lawyer or a dentist working in the factory. Detroit had factories. Chicago had factories. L.A. and New York had factories. These and other major cities provided factory jobs, and black people did well. Post-Reverend Dr. King's assassination in 1970, there was an attack on the black community with two cascading devastations. Wasn't a one hit, you know, like a shot to the head, pow, that's it. These are cascading like waterfall, cascading where the water just keeps running down and down and down. Started back in the 70s and still cascading today, amen? Two cascading devastations. The first attack was economically, amen? It was an economic devastation. This, this, this devastation derived from the shutting down of the factories. Amen? You, 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 you know, sociologically, they'll tell you a lot of things, but sociologically, if you don't have money, economically, you are in a tight fit. Amen? So, so economically, there was an attack causing us to fester in our community. The second attack was socially. The sophisticated, the silent, the slow shutting down of the family. 
They called it welfare. Get rid of the man. And the government said, we'll treat you well and fair. And I'm not saying that welfare didn't help some individuals during those times. But the other side of it, it was a social, amen, attack against our family. It was bad enough during slavery, amen, that our families were disjointed and separated, amen, where they would move, amen, the man, amen, to another plantation, amen, or move the kids to another plantation. That's where we get, uh, the, you my play cousin, because somebody had to care for them when they showed up on a plantation with no mama or daddy, amen. They, 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 they put fear there where, where you could not marry, amen, and we wonder now why so hard for so many men of African descent to make a commitment, amen? So we have this economic devastation. We have this social, sophisticated, amen, so silent attack against the family. Then in 1980, the word on the street was the CIA said, let's crack the black community. And can you believe overnight, my brothers and sisters, black communities were bombarded with crack cocaine. Overnight, one day it wasn't here, the next day it was everywhere. Amen? Yeah, it was not here and then it was everywhere. Amen? And, and it gets worse. In 1990, the attack was politically directed at the black male. I mean, zero in, amen? And we were backdoored with the Clinton crime bill. Amen? I, don't, I know you like Bill Clinton, but him and his wife will both tell you today, amen, that was not the best thing to do. Amen? We're backdoor. Who can forget Three strikes, and you're out. Amen? Who can forget that? We only represent 13.8% of these United States. And over 50% of the incarcerated population are black males. Not people of color, black males. Over 50% of the murdered victim in these United States are black males. Amen? And we, we, we wonder why there's a group of us that sometimes poetically tries to express themselves with bars like it's like a jungle and sometimes it makes me wonder how I keep from going oh I got a church here today I got somebody know who Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five is amen but when we look at the troubles in our community sometimes when you sit and ponder it makes you think amen that this is like a jungle and it does make you wonder how am I going to keep from going under amen but my brothers and sisters amen just follow me for a moment in the year 2000 the attack shifts from the male to the black church. And President Bush introduces the new FBI. Faith-based initiative. Amen? That, 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 that is the government giving the black church money to play hide and seek. Are you listening to me? Why is it that the black mega church is not using their platforms to address hunger, homelessness, education, and economic disparities in our community? And, 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 and lightly are things said about the precarious pandemic in the black community. Amen? We, we, we must understand, amen, that God has given us a voice. Amen? Listen now, I know that we are humanity, but the humanity and the world that we live in is around us, amen, that there is division in the body of Christ. When I say the white church or the black church, it's not going to be the first time you heard it. It's not going to be the last time you heard it. Amen. So don't act like there's not division on Sunday morning in the body of Christ. Amen. But the foundation or the base of the white church is the bank. Anything they want to do, they got a bank in their pocket. They got a bank in their corner. Amen. You can just they can put a church up anytime and anywhere. Amen. But the foundation or the base of the black community is the church. Amen is the church. Amen. 
and thank God the church is alive. Amen. The church is the only legal authority upon the earth. Amen. And we cannot afford to lose our trusted voice. We cannot afford to lose our trusted voice. No matter how much money, amen, is coming toward it, we got to make sure that we're controlling the narrative, amen, and we're not getting hush money because we cannot afford to lose our trusted voice. Where do our people go if they can't hear a word of encouragement for us, amen? Where do they go, amen, if the bishops and the apostles fail? Where do they go if the preachers fail, amen? We must tell our community, like it says in Psalm 20 and Seven. Some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord. Put your hands together and shout, Deliverance is here. Our text today, Jesus here says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Amen. He has anointed me. Amen? He has anointed me. Uh, historically, prophets, priests, and kings were set apart for their work by the anointing with oil. Amen? And, 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 and this oil or ointment was made of various substances, and it was forbidden to imitate it. Hallelujah? Because the priest, prophet, or king had to be set apart for the work of God. And we've made the mistake, amen, of not understanding Psalm 133. Because the anointing, amen, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious, amen, ointment upon the head that run down to Aaron's beard, even to the skirts of his garment. Amen. We made the mistake, amen, in the body of Christ to assume that only people who are anointed, amen, there are people at the top doing well in life. But if the oil starts on the head and runs down on the beard to the skirts of the garment. The heaviest concentration of anointing is down at the bottom. And those of us who are struggling in this life with test trials and tribulations, you ought to stand up and shout, I'm anointed. I might not be able to do what you do, but I'm anointed. I might not sing like an angel, but I'm anointed. I might not preach like Paul, but I'm anointed. There's an anointing upon me because it started on the head and it ran down to the skirts of the garment. Amen. Every Everybody in the hood, amen, is not worthless, amen. There's some anointed people in the hood. I don't care how bad you are, I'm sure we can go under the boardwalk and find somebody to sing you in your grave. I don't care how bad you are, I'm sure there's somebody under the boardwalk that can preach, amen, a whole world in the city to salvation. Uh, the anointing of the Lord does not just rest on people with a large bank account. The anointing of the Lord doesn't rest just with people who dress nice. The anointing flows from the highest mountain to the lowest valley. Shout, I'm included. And thank God that I'm anointed. The priest, prophet, and king had to be set apart for the work of God. Amen? Amen? had to be set apart for the work of God. That's why the Son of God is called the Messiah, the Hebrew word for anointed, or Christ, the Greek word signifying the same thing. Amen? And by Jesus being anointed, it's not meaning he was literally anointed. Amen? Jesus was never set apart in that manner, but God set him apart for this work. Amen? 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 To be a king, a prophet, and a priest. Amen? Amen? And he said, listen, to preach the gospel. Amen? He said, I'll prove to you that I'm anointed. I will preach the gospel to the poor. Amen? Those of us who are poor in spirit, amen? We know Hebrew history. We know the separation of the northern and southern tribe. We know about the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the sects, amen, trying to control the narrative, amen, and ignore the poor, putting all these rules and regulations on the laws of Moses that people couldn't keep, amen? And now all of a sudden, Jesus comes on the scene and say, that's not right, amen? And everything you have done has done nothing for the spirit, amen? 
there, but I come to preach to the poor in spirit. I come to wake something up in you that God put down in you. I come to set you free. Put your hands together and say deliverance is here said I come to preach the gospel to the poor amen I come to preach the gospel to the poor I didn't come to preach division I didn't come to preach hate I didn't come to preach listen I didn't come to preach condemnation I didn't come to send you to hell I came to preach amen the gospel I came to preach the good news I came to communicate to you the very thing that God ordained for you when he put Adam in the garden and the Bible says he that have an ear let him hear what the spirit is saying to the church uh, look at your name and say are you listening because the Pharisees and the Sadducees if you can believe it my brothers and sisters uh, as catapulted as they were in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the Hebrew community they despised the poor amen but Jesus said I got proof that God is with me amen I got proof that I'm from God amen and that is that I'm the anointed that is that I'm the Messiah that is amen that I preach the gospel to the poor it's no way that you can be called by God amen and not have a heart amen for the poor the Bible even says he that gives to the poor lends to God and God shall surely repay him how can we go up and out and over the poor and say God is with us put your hands together and shout deliverance is here he's preaching the gospel to the poor but then he said to prophesy healing to the broken heart to prophesy healing to the brokenhearted. That means to console those hearts who are broken by external calamities. Amen? There are systems and destructions and things that are organized and strategically placed. Amen? That are causing calamity in many of our lives. Amen? It's no way, amen, that we can blame everything, amen, on something, but we cannot ignore racism. Amen. We cannot ignore the structural, amen, inequalities, amen, the economic inequalities that are around us. We cannot ignore them, amen. But neither can we just blame everything, amen, or everything, amen, being blamed, amen, on somebody or somebody else. We've got to understand, amen, that every attack that comes is spiritual, amen. And that's why Jesus said, I come to prophesy, I come to preach, amen, I come to attack that spirit amen and we have got to understand if the problem is in the spirit the solution is in the spirit amen and there are a lot of things that we're looking for amen but we've got to start looking amen in the spirit somebody say I see beyond what I see I see beyond what I see. We've got to look a little farther, amen, than the governor. we got to look a little farther than the president. Got to look a little farther than politicians, amen, because legislation is not going to solve the real problem, amen. Voting is not going to solve the real problem, amen. There's a real problem going on, amen, and we cannot forget, amen, where the problem lies. Somebody shout deliverance is here, and because deliverance is here, we celebrate today that Satan is defeated. Amen? He's alive, but he is defeated. Amen? And we've got to stand on the holy word of God. Amen? That no weapon that's formed against us shall prosper. Amen? The word of God teaches us no weapon that's formed against us shall prosper. That means we cannot lose. Amen? Once we are baptized into the body of Christ. And we have to start, Pastor Sherwood, of looking, amen, at these dynamics that are happening to us as a whole and as an individual through a lens amen that deliverance is here we're trying to find deliverance for some of the ills of our community and our personal lives amen through the White House uh, but deliverance did not come from the White House uh, and it never will uh, we're trying to find it at the voting booth uh, we're trying to find it in the Black Lives rally, Moves rally here uh, we're trying to find deliverance in all these different ways uh, but Jesus said the Spirit of the Lord is upon me 
I am your deliverer. I know how to take care of you. And I know how to take care of your problems. And I'm so glad that the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not to your own understanding. Somebody said, I remember to him. I will trust in the Lord. And I get a witness. I will trust in the Lord. There's a lot of things set up in this world that we live in. But we've got to trust in the Lord with all of our heart. We can't be halfway in and halfway out. You're going to be saved and sanctified or nothing else. Because this world has games and they know how to play it. And I don't know about you, but my life is bigger than a monopoly game, a game on a board. They put the black against the white, the old against the young, the male against the female. And now here we are in this season of a pandemic, COVID-19, and they're pitting the vaccinated against the unvaccinated. And I'm telling you, you can let the air out your chest just because you've been vaccinated because there's one more mood coming. Now you need a booster shot. And just like everybody did not get vaccinated, everybody vaccinated, it's not going to get the booster. They're dividing us so they can conquer us. But I've got news. Deliverance is here. I'm so glad that the Lord mighty in battle, the Lord strong and mighty. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's the Alpha and Omega. He's the first and the last. I stop by to tell you it starts with God and it ends with God. Can I get a witness? I'm so glad that I'm not moved by what I see on CNN, ABC, MSCBC, or CBS, but I'm moved and motivated by the word of God. Can I get a witness? Because my mind goes back to the songwriter in the word of God. I got a hiding place. I don't know about you, but I believe the Lord is my rock and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I fear? Can I get a witness? If God be for us, who can be against us? Look at somebody, even you at home, and say I'm in the world, but I'm not of the world. I'm not shaking because somebody didn't get vaccinated. I'm not shaking because everybody is not vaccinated. I'm so glad I've got something more powerful than the Pfizer, Moderna, or Johnson & Johnson. It's called the blood. Yeah, I'm so glad that the blood still works. Yeah, Jesus shed his blood on the cross on a hill called Golgotha. It was at Calvary where the virus was destroyed. It was at Calvary where COVID-19 was destroyed. It's here and it's a weapon but it has no authority over my life. I'm not going to ignore social distancing. I'm not going to ignore wearing a mask but I'm not going to fall out and trip over what the government is trying to do because our government is like the word of God. We don't preach what it says but we preach what it implies. 
implies. If you can't believe what the government is saying, you got to feel what's being implied by what they're saying. And I don't know about you, but when I hear what they're saying on the news, I get one message. It's almost over. It's almost over. We're living in the last days. Soon and very soon. Can I get a witness? We're going to see the king. And I don't know about you, but I'm ready. I'm ready because I got up when he got up. Am I right about it? When the Lord God Almighty died on the cross and was buried in the grave, he didn't stay dead in Jerusalem. There's an empty tomb. Look at your neighbor and say he got up. I said shout to your neighbor. He got up. And I don't know about you, but when Jesus uh, rose from the dead uh, I rose with him uh, and in him uh, the apostle Paul said uh, I live uh, I move uh, and I have uh, my being uh, can I get a witness uh, deliverance uh, is here uh, what are you saying uh, the government uh, is not the answer uh, the president uh, is not the answer uh, the mayor uh, and the programs uh, are not the answer. Uh, our elected officials uh, are not the answer. Uh, but I know uh, who is uh, the answer. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, I know uh, who is uh, the answer. Uh, Jesus uh, is the answer. He's the lily uh, of the valley uh, to a farmer. Uh, he's the bright uh, and morning star uh, to the scientist. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, this God, uh, man. Uh, am I right about it? Uh, there's one mediator uh, between God uh, and man. Uh, that is uh, the man, uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, and deliverance uh, is here uh, right now. Uh, deliverance uh, for your ministry uh, deliverance uh, for your marriage uh, deliverance uh, for your money uh, is here uh, hold on uh, to your faith uh, in these last uh, and evil days uh, walk uh, by faith uh, and not uh, by sight uh, can I get a witness uh, I heard uh, Isaiah say uh, whose report are you going to believe? Can I get a witness? I believe the report of the Lord. Am I right about it? I said, I believe the report of the Lord. And I heard that that report is all is well. Can I get a witness? All is well. The prophet approached the lady. Her baby had died. He said, it's all well. And in the midst of a baby laying dead on the bed, she said, all is well. My unemployment is expiring, but all is well. My SNAP benefits are being reduced uh, but all uh, is well uh, I'm in uh, foreclosure uh, but all uh, is well uh, my car payment uh, is behind uh, but all uh, is well uh, my job uh, said uh, if I'm not vaccinated uh, I got to go uh, and it's all right uh, because all uh, ah, all uh, is well uh, why is everything all right? Because deliverance is here. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging for bread. God is a 
way maker. Can I get a witness? I don't know where you are. I don't know you in Facebook land where you are or what you're going through. But Jesus is a way maker. Can I get a witness? He'll make a way. I said he'll make a way. He'll be your lawyer in the courtroom. Doctor in the sick room. Can I get a witness? Bridge over troubled waters. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. That's the God that we serve. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad that deliverance is here. Jesus is not dead, but he's alive. And when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul, even though I see that things could be better, my soul cries out, hallelujah, church. It's rough uh, out here. Uh, I took my wife uh, to the store yesterday. Uh, they had a sign up. Uh, I had to rub my eyes. Uh, help wanted. Uh, $12 uh, an hour. Uh, $12? Uh, that's only enough uh, to buy toilet paper. Uh, I need a real uh, salary today because uh, everything costs. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, dirt costs. Uh, you got to pay for everything today. Uh, and $12 uh, ain't going to do it. Uh, am I right about it? Uh, so I look to the hills. Uh, but where's coming my help? Uh, because my help uh, comes from the Lord. Uh, am I right about it? Uh, Jesus uh, never fails. Uh, and where he leads me, uh, I'll follow. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, my time is up. Uh, and I thank you for yours. Uh, but today, uh, I want you to stand uh, on the Deliverance uh, is here. Uh, he's already uh, made a way uh, out of no way. Uh, so we're running uh, through troops uh, and leaping uh, over walls uh, because we have uh, the victory. Uh, am I right about it? Uh, we have uh, the victory. Uh, shout, I am victorious uh, in my spirit, uh, in my soul, uh, in my body. Uh, I've got the victory. Yeah, I'm so glad that Jesus never fails. I've been walking with the Lord a long time. And my grandma said he never fails. My mom and dad said he never fails. But I stand here today and decree and declare for myself, he never fails. Even when I do, I know you got your halo on. But I miss God sometime. And when I miss God, he's still right there. Can I get a witness that he's all right? I said he's all right. He's all right. Well, Grace family, it's time to go. But before we go, look at somebody and give them an air high five. And say, neighbor, we're not going to fade out. We're not going to drag out. But we're going to shout out. Because we heard that deliverance. I said, we heard that deliverance is here. It's not on its way. But deliverance is here. And he who the Son sets free is free indeed. Somebody shout it. I'm free. I said, shout out free. Come on, Facebook family. Get up off that sofa. Get out that chair. Get out that bed. And come on. And don't be crazy. I said, help me pray. Get up tomorrow with a new attitude. I said, say, I'm getting up tomorrow with a new attitude.
with a new attitude. Deliverance is here. He made a way. He made a way. God bless you. I said, God bless you. We love you. And thank you for joining us at the Cathedral Grace Family Church, where our vision is building God's kingdom, one family at a time, through evangelism, education, and empowerment.